Hi hi, it's the tiny one slash bishi and let's play some more Danganronpa. Um, last I played this episode, Makoto got thrown in the trash. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, he almost got crushed to death, but thanks to Alter Ego, he survived and got dumped headfirst down in the garbage chute which looks very horrible. Now we have to find a way out of here, so, well, as Makoto, so let's see what we can find in here. This is a desk. It's probably the one that fell down here with me. Now I'm supposed you don't have brain damage or something. That's a rocket and a tank. I better not think too much about what I'm seeing down here. Oh, where have we seen a rocket? Mm -hmm. Oh, same thing. Okay. Um, why is it point to that? Ugh. Okay, it's over here. Is that an airplane? How did something like that wind up in the school's garbage pit? That's why it's up there. Uh, airplane. Alright, um... <clears throat> rattle, rattle. It's locked. No matter how many times I pushed or pulled or kicked at it, it didn't budge. Getting out of here isn't going to be that easy. Well, if I'm not getting out of here anytime soon, I decided to look around for some food. Ew! There's plenty of food here, but it's all rotten. Yeah, because it's the garbage. But that was pointless too. Next, I searched for some water. How can I be sure which liquid I can drink and which ones are an all-around bad idea? Again, pointless. I feel like I'm blocked on in on all sides. But that's still not enough reason to give up because... Because I'm still alive! With a head wound! Possibly a concussion. As long as I'm alive, I'll never give up. After making that proud declaration to nobody, <laughs> the next thing I decided to do was go to sleep. That's what I was thinking. Curl up and go to sleep. Take a nap nap. My sleep was deep and uninterrupted. That was my only way to preserve what little strength I had left after not being able to eat or drink. How long has it been since you haven't been able to eat or drink, dude? I can't be sure, but I think at least a full day had to have passed. And then, fortunately, with the way time passes and the way we think time passes, sometimes we think, oh my god, it's been hours and hours and hours. And so I've been like a couple minutes or like an hour or two. <laughs> uh, you get that when you are at work or you're at school and you're like, oh my god, it's so boring. And then you look at the clock and then you look at it again. It's like, oh my god, two minutes have passed. <clears throat> and all I did was sleep and sleep. It was like I was waiting for some kind of sign to come falling out of the sky. However, what fell from the sky wasn't a sign. Not exactly. Got crunch? How a word is that? What the? Probably more garbage. <clears throat> the strange sound pierced my silent isolation, jarring me awake. <laughs> yeah, it could have fell on you, dude. As I watched, the pile of garbage jostled and formed an odd shape. Did something fall down over there? Something fell from up above. What could it have been? Oh, uh, now we have garbage to look at, I guess. Did a giant piece of trash just fall down here? Duh! 
I carefully stretched my hand out toward whatever it was that tumbled down here with me. Just a second. Ah! <laughs> yes! So, now we know that Makoto is trash, and if we go by the voice, Kirigiri is now trash, too. They're the, the, the lovable trash pandas that... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> A giant piece of trash, rude. Before she even emerged from the pile of garbage, I knew who it was. Probably the only person that would come down here that's still alive. <laughs> um, you got a little... You got a little... little yeah, no, it's... It's right there. This place smells awful. No kidding, it's the garbage! Oh my god, Kyoko. Indeed. <laughs> you look like you're doing better than I expected. What did you expect? Him to me, like, on the live? Massive head wound? Um, <clears throat> I mean, what? What are you doing here? Uh, rescuing you, dum dum? So. Isn't it obvious I'm here to help you? Yeah. <laughs> She's probably be like, well, if you don't want my help, I could leave. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Kyoko. Um, you got a bit of... a little something right there. <laughs> you got a bit of garbage in your hair. She's probably all offended. Like, how dare you say I have... my hair is garbage. She gave her hair a quick, sharp shake to get rid of the trash and face me again. So, funny thing about this is, um... I was still kind of, sort of, getting into Danganronpa, and, um, <clears throat> I had gotten in, I mainly got into the second game, I really love the second game, and, um, Miss Artistry, at the time, she loves Kirigiri, and at one of the cons we attended, she cosplayed Kirigiri, and, since I do, you know, photography as like a hobby, I did a photo shoot for her. And one of the fo poses that we did is she took, I think we found like a ramen cup or something like that. And we did that pose where she's posing with a, with a cup of ramen on her head. Hey, first I have something for you. Go ahead and eat it. We can talk once you're finished. Where did you have that? Did you have, like, tuck it in your pockets and then just jump down in the trash with the bags? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. I snatched the bread and water that she was holding out for me. Dude. Be nice. Within seconds, it was in my mouth and making its way toward my stomach. Horfed it. Okay. Woo, that really hit the spot. Now I've got all the energy I need to keep going. From two little biscuits and a small bottle of water? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you still haven't given up then? He acted like he was on death's door. And then like that little tiny like snack. And he's like, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Of course not. <laughs> After all, the fact that I can keep going forward is about all I'm good at. Yeah, you say that now. But when, uh, before she came, you're like, well, I guess I'll just lay down here then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not such a bad thing to be good at. Okay. I want to still inspect that trash. There's an unbelievable amount of trash here. But Kyoko, why'd you come to rescue me? So... To pay a debt? Or no, to atone. Atone? You... During the trial, even though you knew I was lying, you didn't say anything. So, if you watched my playthrough of the trial, <clears throat> you'll see that I did a little Easter egg 
where the Easter egg is if you point the finger at Kirigiri, she does the, uh, the same fate happens to her where she does the same um, like execution as Makoto except she gets smashed to death and not rescued and then supposedly you like go on and live your life there at the school and they make Hina some like baby factory where she has babies with <clears throat> each of the male characters which is kind of gross because they're teenagers but I don't know Makoto if that's your like weird vision of what might have happened since you picked her then uh yeah bonk you with the horny hammer go to jail <laughs> cuz ew but anyways let's continue during the trial, even though you knew I was lying, you didn't say anything. So you knew that I knew. Indeed. But even though I knew, I did nothing to help you. Um. I abandoned you. Don't say that. You didn't abandon me. Okay. No, that's exactly what I did. I abandoned you in order to save my own life. You were trying to save me, and I couldn't bring myself to do the same for you. However, but listen, not that I'm trying to make excuses, but excuse me. <clears throat> not to make excuses, but please excuse my allergy sounding voice. There was a reason that I had to survive, no matter the cost. Why did you have to survive? It's true. I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. The reason I have to survive, in other words, is so that I can do what I came to this school to do. What? I made up my mind to come to Hope's Peak Academy for one very important reason. <clears throat> so you have some reason for coming to Hope's Peak? Indeed. That's right. At least I did. Once. Once? I... Until recently, I'd forgotten what it was. You forgot? But that's... I had no memory of what my purpose was. No memory? That's impossible. Huh? Amnesia? Then, is it really true? You lost your memory? Makoto. Do you remember, Makoto? Do you remember the first thing that happened to each of us as soon as we arrived at the school? The first thing? You were talking about when we fainted, right? I fainted, and when I woke up, I was trapped here. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself. A disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point, my memory was gone. At that time, I had forgotten. I couldn't remember why I came to the school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. Are you saying you think you lost your memory because... Indeed. I don't think. I'm positive it was the work of the Mastermind. They stole my memory. But why would they want to do that? There's only one reason I can come up with. Because my purpose and my ability somehow they would interfere with the Mastermind's plans. So the Mastermind just stole them from you? However... And it could also mean somehow my memories may be connected to the mystery of the school and the Mastermind. Which is why I have to get them back. That's why I've been investigating things by myself this whole time. But if what you say is true, why didn't you ask the rest of us to help you? because it would put the rest of them in danger and up Monokuma's suspicion of everybody. Why is that? If I did that and we all worked as one, the mastermind would have noticed right away. Right. Plus, there's always a chance that the mastermind's actually one of us. Also a very good point. What? Correct. 
Well, don't make too big of a deal of it. It's just a possibility. But since it is a possibility, we can't ignore it, right? The mastermind, one of us, if she believed that, then of course she couldn't trust anyone around her. In which case, it only makes sense that she would look into her missing memory by herself. However, that being said, there was a limit to what I could do by myself, which is why I asked you to help me. But why me? <laughs> because among everyone, you were least likely to be the mastermind. That was just intuition, but... I, I see. Your intuition was right, though. There's no way an ordinary kid like me could have been the mastermind. I... understand. I should... understand everything. My goal isn't to get out of here. It's... to stay here. Gah. It's just like the dream I had before, but why did that just happen? Listen. Are you okay? Oh, yeah, it's nothing. It is nothing, right? Hey. Even now, I still trust you, you know. It's just, I'm not used to relying on others. Correct. I know I never asked you for help the right way, so I understand if you're not convinced. Honestly, I was convinced. I think that's just her personality. Okay. You said you had a reason for doing all that investigation, investigating on your own. So how'd that turn out? Were you able to remember anything? So... I think there's still a lot I don't remember, but at the very least, I was finally able to recall my purpose and my ability. Ooh. You mentioned your ability. I... My ability. What everyone should have known me for. I'm the ultimate detective. Which makes a lot of sense. The ultimate detective? Correct. And the reason I came to Hope Speak Academy. There was someone I had to find here in school. You had to find someone? Who? So... Well... It was the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy. The headmaster? Why did you want to find the headmaster? Because he's my father. What? In other words... I was separated from him as a child. As it turns out, he became the headmaster of Hope's Peak. Kyoko's dad? Is Hope's Peak's headmaster? Then that explains... When Alter Eagle told us how how he thought the headmaster was involved. I... Wow, I stumbled over that. I'm sorry, everyone. I'll find a way. Huh? I... No matter what it takes, I will find the headmaster. No matter what? No matter the cost. So, um... Kyoko, what's going on? I... My memory hadn't come back at that point, but when he said that, I felt... strange. It makes perfect sense now, of course, since my whole purpose for coming here was to find him. That makes sense. However... But listen, Makoto, I want to make this perfectly clear so there's no misunderstanding. I said the headmaster wasn't the mastermind, but I didn't say that to protect him. I only said what I felt based on what I had seen when I snuck into the headmaster's room. Then, what did you see in there? So... The room had been ransacked. The shelves were a mess. Desk drawers dumped on the floor. The only conclusion is that someone who didn't know where anything was had been in there. You mean, the mastermind, right? It's true. That was my assumption, yes. And to confirm my suspicion, I decided to investigate the second floor of the dorms using the key I'd found. But why there? Because I also found this in the headmaster's room. This is... some kind of map? Indeed. It's a layout of the entirety of Hope's Peak Academy. I found it in the headmaster's room, along with Makuro's profile and that key. The map showed that the second floor was home to a number of rooms meant for faculty use. Some of the staff must have had to stay overnight from time to time. 
Uh, I figured the headmaster would have some kind of private room there. I assumed that if that were true, that room would likely hold more clues, so I went to check. Correct. And that's when I finally remembered. I remember that my purpose was to find the owner of that room. So you went there to see if the headmaster really did have a private room there. However... Because once I got there, I noticed that the second floor of the dorms didn't have any cameras or monitors. So, what was it like? That part of the school, I mean. It's hard to describe. All I can say is... I... The moment I saw it, I realized... Whatever is going on in the school is more horrific than we ever imagined. What do you mean? So... I can't explain it. You need to see it for yourself. And I'm sure you'll get your chance soon enough. It sounds like it must be important. And really ominous. <clears throat> so let's use your key to open that door. However... Of course. Once I got to the second floor of the dorms, there were no cameras or monitors. Oh. oh. I... I already did that, so... right? So... Okay. Alright, so can we do that door? I better talk to Kyoko. Oh my god. However... Which is- oh, okay. Which is why I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the building. It has to do with Makuro Ikusaba, doesn't it? However... Just to be perfectly clear, I didn't kill her. And I know it wasn't you either. I know you're right, but that just means... Everyone but you and me has an alibi. So then who did kill her? Anyway... What I can say for sure is that the mastermind is directly involved. To begin with, the point of the class trial with Makuro Ikusaba was to get me killed. Get you killed? Indeed. I stole that key and disappeared, and in retaliation they wanted to draw me out and eliminate me. Correct. That was the point of the class trial. It was? The mastermind knew they couldn't interfere directly. You mean, because of the school regulations? That's right. Exactly. With minimal restriction, you are free to explore Hope's Peak Academy at your discretion. In other words... The mastermind is adamant about following the rules. And with that rule in place, they couldn't step in. Since they couldn't kill me themselves, they tried to use a class trial to do it. The mastermind couldn't step in because of the rules? That makes it sound like... The mastermind themselves is somehow bound by the school regulations. Hey. There's one other thing I'd like to point out about the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. What's that? There was a point where Mukuro may not have become the victim. It could have been you, Makoto. I could have become the victim? Indeed. You know what I'm talking about, right? In his room. Do you mean... During the night? I... I can hear them, you know. The footsteps of the God of Death. What? I can hear the God of Death as he moves. That ability naturally draws me into cases just like this. Anyway, which is exactly what happened with you. I was in the dorms, and I had a sudden sense of dread. I looked down the stairwell, and I saw a white shadow cross the corridor. I gave chase right away. As I followed it, I saw the shadow go into your room. Correct. I ran to your room, and I saw what was happening. I intervened immediately, of course. However... That wasn't the end of things, of course. I stopped them, but that led to... Whoever the masked assailant was, they ended up dead. Correct. And their murder was disguised, and the dojo key wound up in my room. It all has to be the work of the mastermind, in an attempt to use a class trial to eliminate me. So all this would mean that whoever killed Makuro is also the mastermind, right? Indeed. I don't have conclusive evidence, but that's what I think. But that's really bad if it's true. It means the Mastermind can kill whoever they want if they feel like it. Wait, but doesn't that create another contradiction? The Mastermind wanted to use the class trial to try and kill you because they couldn't interfere, right? Correct. You're right. 
that is a contradiction. And it's not just Makuro. They needed the class child to kill me, but seemed ready to kill you in your room. Everything they did is a contradiction. So, what does that all mean? In other words... It means that the mastermind is the one who's been concerned. Oh, it means that the mastermind is the one who's been cornered. Huh? Makoto. Just a little more. A little more and I should be able to figure out the mastermind's identity. The identity of the other ultimate despair. Other ultimate despair? There's no doubt that Makura was the ultimate despair and that she's dead. But I don't think the ultimate despair is just one person. It's not? Indeed. If you think about it, the ultimate despair seems to implicate whoever caused that event. You're talking about... That's right. What happened a year ago? The biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy? Whoever's responsible for that? They're the ultimate despair? It would seem... That despicable group whose only purpose and motivation comes from despair. Then they're... Indeed. Make no mistake. They're the root of all the evil that's forced us to go through this. That is the ultimate despair. And that is our real enemy. Chapter 5, 100 Mile Dash, Pain of the Junk Food Junkie. The end. <clears throat> okay, we're down to six students. You received the Dream Island Rocket present. That looked like a butt plug. <laughs> I'm sorry. That did not look like a rocket at first. I know it's pixelated and they can only do so much with pixels, but oh my god. Uh, do you want to say, oh, and I got five alive as the achievement unlocks. Do you want to save the data? Yes. There. Override. Yes. The ultimate despair? A group of people who caused the tragedy one year ago? Those same people put together this killing game and began broadcasting around the world. The most desperately awful group of people ever. That is the mastermind's true identity. Our enemy has finally been revealed. But right now... Anyway... Right now we have to get out of this horrible place. Maybe not the rest of the story can come after. Yeah, you're right. So I think with me playing more of these type of games and the more I have to read, that will kind of help my brain learn how to not stumble over words as much. It kind of also helps when I'm not tired. Because I used to read a lot and I noticed that reading to myself and reading out loud has always been an issue for me. But I do want to learn more about getting more control over my mouth, my brain, and my words with reading out loud. So, alright. Do we talk to Kyoko again or do we hit that door? Let's see. Oh, we talk to her again. Kyoko, do you still have that one thing? Monokuma's secret tool that you got from the headmaster's room? Indeed. Of course I do. It is an absolutely vital part of ensnaring the mastermind. I would never part with it. That is a cool looking key. I would love to have a key like that. Even if it's just like for prop. Oh, I wonder if I can make that with like wires and stuff. That would be a cool prop, especially if I do like Makoto and I have a carrier with me and she can carry that around. And it can open any door in the school, right? That's right. That's right. Oh, she said. Then we should be able to use it on that door, right? Get that door. Hey, Kyoko. We can use that key or to open this door, right? It's true. Let's find out. Kyoko took out the key with the Monokuma design on it and slid it into the keyhole. And then... Open door! Yes, it opened. Indeed. 
And now we can get out of here. Let's go. Sounds good. We quickly opened the door and made our escape from the garbage pit. Finally. We were finally free. But there wasn't even time to take a breath of relief. Because the real fight had just begun. Chapter 6. The ultimate pain, ultimate suffering, ultimate despair, ultimate execution, ultimate death. Daily, deadly life. Ugh, that was a lot. After leaving the garbage pit, we found ourselves in a tunnel extending straight up, like a chimney. There was a metal ladder leaning up into the tunnel. We started climbing the ladder, intent on reaching the surface. Yeah, notice they do the black shadow for Kirigiri. I do appreciate that because they're teenagers. And I think it's in the anime that Makoto is like, ladies first. You know, he wants Kirigiri to go first. She's like, excuse me, because she doesn't want him looking up her skirt. It's funny. <coughs> I would recommend, after watching this playthrough that you go find on, I think it's on Funimation. I'm not sure if it's on Crunchyroll, but look for Danganronpa the Animation, which is going to be uh, about the first game, and you'll get to see this whole uh, game animated. The ladder was impossibly long. I couldn't even see where it ended. We climbed into darkness. The passage was so dark and cramped, I couldn't even see my own feet beneath me. I had no idea we were so far down. Hey. Don't lose your footing. If you slip, I won't be able to catch you. Plus, she's in heels! Yeah, I'll be careful. But now that you said that, I'm getting kind of nervous. Just go, dude. Don't think about it. Maybe talking will help keep my mind off it. something I wanted to ask you. You said you were the ultimate detective, right? So how long have you been doing detective work? <laughs> and hers is like, censor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. How long? <laughs> so... Ever since I can remember, I came from a long line of detectives. Detective work is in my blood. There was a time when being a detective was considered a sacred duty. My family's always seen it that way. Then, is your family famous? Wrong. Quite the opposite, actually. Even among actual detectives, many people hadn't, haven't heard of us. Huh? But how come? It's like your family tradition, right? So... Right. Because we take pride in it. Pride? Indeed. A detective is neither light nor shadow. We represent neither justice nor evil. That is how we can uncover the absolute truth. We stand neutral in all things, and to do that, we have to stand separate from the rest of society, which is why we made a conscious effort to conceal our existence. A conscious effort? Now it looks like he's trying to look at her butt. Oh my god. Oh, all... Oh. The animation, or all the pictures they could put. They did that one? It's true. <sighs> oh my god. It's kind of old-fashioned, and I can't say it's entirely rational. But it's our family's creed, and we do what we must to protect it. Because, like I said, it's our source of pride. Pride? So that explains... Before I came here... When I was looking up info about the school online, I never saw anything about her. Because she hid herself on purpose, to protect the pride of her family. However... And yet... I... gave up some of that pride. Huh? I... In order to enter Hope's Peak, I had to reveal myself to the school. I did it knowing it was something a true Kirigiri detective would never do. But the reason you gave up that pride 
the reason you would go so far to enter Hope's Peak is because that's how much you wanted to reconnect with your dad, right? There's no shame in that. What? Reconnect? I have absolutely no desire to reconnect with my father. Huh? But you'd be reunited after all those years, right? You would have had so much to talk about. Wrong. There's nothing I want to talk to my father about. However... There is something I want to say to him, though. What? I... No matter what it takes, I have to find him and tell him, face to face. What is it? So... I want to sever all ties with him. Sever? The last time I saw him, I was still very young. So I don't remember myself. But apparently, he was stream extremely intelligent. He was in line to become the next head of the Kirigiri family. He was talented. He had a promising future. However... But he had no interest in detective work. So he cut himself off from the family. Not long after that, my mother died, and he simply ran away. He went to my grandfather, and they had a huge argument. And young as I was, he left me behind. I, I'm sure there's a reason for that. I'm sure your dad wanted to take you with him. Right. If that's true, then I need to thank him. Thank him for leaving me. Because unlike him, I take pride in the work I do. I take pride in my family name. So every last part of me is happy he didn't take me with him. If I had gone with him, I would have never had the chance to become a detective. I was above Kyoko on the ladder, so I wasn't able to see her expression. So I couldn't tell. I couldn't see how she looked when she said that, what she might have been feeling. All I could tell was that compared to her usual self, she was more talkative and more emotional. I... I don't blame him, you know. He had his own life to live. That's why anyone in my position might say, right? But it's not true. However... But there's one thing, one thing that I can never forgive. Really? So... <clears throat> the way everyone else looked at me. I was never sad about being left behind. Like I said, I think it was a good thing. However... But when the rest of my family looked at me, they saw something different. They only saw me as the little girl that was abandoned by her father. That's how they see me even to this day. I... His shadow has been following me my entire life. I'm sick of it. I need him out of my life. I need to step out of his shadow. Correct. That's why I have to find him and tell him we're no longer family. In order to settle the past. In order to remove him from my life forever. I have no doubt he forgot about me years ago. But uh, your family, to just cut him out like that. Wrong. Our only connection is through blood, nothing more. Are we connected by heart and soul? No. Hey. Is blood really enough to call someone family? Only connected by blood, not by heart or soul. I was so shocked to hear her say something like that. I didn't know how to respond. So instead, I said nothing. I just kept climbing the ladder in complete silence. And after I don't know how long, we finally reached the top. Looks like this is it. Indeed. On the other side of this door, Hope's Peak is waiting for us. We're back? That's right. Remember that hatch on the ground near the trash room? I'm fairly certain that's where we'll come out. I unlocked it earlier, so it should open without much trouble. Well, here goes nothing. I reached my right hand up and pushed against the hatch. <clears throat> the hatch opened with ease, and so... Yep. Looks like we're back. Whew. But I can't believe how long that ladder was. I'm exhausted. I can't exactly say we're safe and sound, but at least we're out of there. Now we're back in Hope's Peak Academy. Kyoko, thank you. I never would have gotten out of there without you. Hmm. 
No thanks necessary. I was just returning the favor. Okay. This is how we got out of the garbage pit. I never would have imagined that's where this led. Uh, it's such a trash room. Okay. <clears throat> this is the trash room. The dump, in other words. But to be honest, I don't think I've seen anyone throw anything away down there. Here. Yeah, exactly. Alright. Let's suck to Kyoko again. So now what do we do? I'm glad I didn't die, of course. But if the mastermind finds out. And I'm worried about you, too. You helped me. So they might... Listen. You're worried? Yeah, of course. So then... Then let's just get a concrete answer. Uh-oh. Huh? In other words... Let's ask Monokuma if there's a problem with you escaping. Oh no! Wait, that's... However... If we try to hide, it's only a matter of time until we're found out. And it's not like we can run away. As she said that, she pointed to a nearby surveillance camera. So you're saying rather than stressing out over getting caught, we should just give up now? Don't worry. What you think is going to happen isn't. Because... Because the mastermind is the one that's snared. The mastermind isn't snared? You said something like that before. What does it mean? So... The mastermind stood exposed during the investigation to Makuro's death. Here, let me take a sip of coffee real quick. There was a moment where the mastermind let their guard down. There was? Right. If we can talk to Monokuma, we can confirm it. And it'll be better for us if we go to him directly before he tracks us down. That should help with our negotiations. I'm still a little... No, super uneasy about this. But we really don't have much of a choice, do we? Indeed. Monokuma should be in the gym. Shall we go? Let's get going. Okay, well. Uh, map. Okay. So. No, we want Jim. Uh, uh, there we go. Where's the Jim again? Has turned around. <clears throat> I didn't even get to see if anyone was out and about, but I don't well, think so. Well, now, well, now, well, now. Oh. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Kyoko, I don't mind so much. I don't believe it. <laughs> But Makoto's supposed to be dead. What's he doing here? That's exactly how I thought he'd react. Are we really going to be okay? You're supposed to be punished. Did Kyoko help you? What? So what if I did? What will you do? Shing! If the guilty party is exposed during the class trial, they alone will be executed. It's unfortunate, but that is the rule. So now I gotta punish you again! Angry. And this time I won't leave anything to chance. Kyoko! Right. Do whatever you feel you have to. What? However. But before you do, let me just say one thing. No. If you execute Makoto, that means you lose. Not that that matters to you, right? Huh? I lose? Hey! You! Explain yourself! What do you mean by that? Because... Well, you set up this latest class trial yourself, right? I was getting you in your way, so you wanted an excuse to kill me. In other words... I was supposed to be chosen as a black end, and then executed, right? Yeah. Hey, what are you talking about? However... 
But when Makoto chose to overlook my lie, your plan came crashing down. The results of the trial weren't at all what you were expecting. Because you never imagined that in that position, one person would protect another like that. Right. And in response to that unexpected development, Indeed. You reacted by proclaiming Makoto the blackest and trying to execute him. You made the choice out of desperation. No, more than that. You must have realized that Makoto, who refused to be manipulated, was a threat to you as well. However, but then there was another unexpected development waiting for you. An entity that would throw a wrench, so to speak, in your precious execution machinery. Alter Ego. <laughs> you never imagined the possibility of it being that could come to our... Uh, take two. You never imagined the possibility of a being that could come to our aid even after you killed it. Am I wrong? Now here's the absolute truth. Makoto didn't kill Makuro. You did. Oh, he got nothing to say. Listen to me. So executing Makoto for it would have surely been a violation of your rules, which I know you love so much. If the Blackened is exposed, they alone will be executed. That's what you told us, right? Mm. Huh? And that means I lose? You talk a big game. You're saying the Blackened is me and not Makoto? Well? And you can prove this, right? Well. No, I can't. Don't just say it like that. Mm. What is this, a comedy routine? To make such bold claims without shred of evidence. That doesn't matter. I don't have any right now, but with a little more time, I guarantee I'll find some. That's right. Because no matter how deeply you try to bury it, there's only ever one absolute truth. <laughs> and now you're trying to talk like some kind of famous detective type. Because... If Makoto really was a killer, he never would have come to you willingly like this. He would have feared for his life, feared another execution. He would have tried to run and hide. He would have been gripped by the despair you so love to inspire. However... But here we are, confronting you with nothing but hope in our hearts. What the heck?! And that's supposed to be enough to convince me in the absence of evidence? Indeed. It's not you I'm trying to convince. Hey. If you were trying to execute Makoto now, everyone out there watching this would be extremely displeased. Huh? Indeed. Imagine what everyone out there would think if you killed Makoto. They would assume that you killed him because what we said is, is exactly right. Listen to me. Despair can never kill hope. Uh oh, he mad. Hey. Of course, you can say we're just making this all up. You're welcome to prove us wrong. No, you have no choice but to prove it. Because if you kill Makoto without proving your own innocence, You'll be accepting your own defeat. Uh-oh. If you want to earn our despair fair and square, That's what we have to do. then I suggest you take my advice. So what is this advice of yours? It's true. To do Makuro's trial over again. Only this time, you follow the school regulations to ensure a fair trial. It's time for one last showdown. One final battle between hope in despair. Hey. Well, that would make for a proper climax, wouldn't you say? A fair trial. One last showdown. In other words, this would be our chance to expose the true identity of Makuro's killer of the Mastermind themselves. But what reason would the Mastermind have to accept the challenge? They'll probably just execute me without another word. <laughs> interesting. Bear it! Very interesting indeed. Barry. What's wrong? Oh, I was getting bored, so I decided to change things up a bit. So time for bear jokes. Oh, God. Now, what you suggested may become... Uh, no, oh, God. It's gonna be hard to read. Now, what you suggested might be possible... It would certainly make for one honey of a climax. In other words... Lord... Oh no, dude. 
Does that mean you accept? You guys! If we do things your way, that'll be enough to convince you and the viewers, right? And it would cause you unbearable despair, right? Then I'm pre-bared to agree with your terms. <laughs> will your hope win it out, or will my despair claim victory? I can barely contain myself! Oh my god. Let's have one final grisly showdown. He agreed? Then we still have a shot at this? Bear it! But this is the long way of climax, right? Just guessing the killer is barely a fitting end. You guys! So for this final face-off, you'll have to unearth all the mysteries that have been buried here. All the mysteries? <laughs> that's right, every last mystery that's pawing around the school, if you can do that. I can barely contain myself! Oh my god. Then you'll that'll be enough to qualify as a victory for you. It's true. That's what we've been trying to do all along. <laughs> okay, well good. Then let's bear it all. If you can claw your way to the truth of Macron's death and solve the mysteries of this school, you guys! then you win. <laughs> but if you can't do all that, we'll all face execution, right? <laughs> I can barely contain my excitement. When you learn the whole truth, what kind of despair will you show me? <laughs> We're as excited as you are, I'm sure. Listen to me. When we've uncovered every last truth, how will the ultimate despair reveal their own despair? I honestly can't believe how this has all turned out. Hey. But before we get started, I want to clarify one more thing. Do you remember the rule? When one student kills another, that's when the class trial is held? What's wrong? I remember that for sure. So what? Hey. I just want to confirm that is what you said, right? And that it's a true statement? <laughs> you don't have to be so suspicious. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. Everything is based on the school regulations. And having a trial for Makuro is no exception to that. Huh? Makuro's trial is no exception. Then it's part of the regulations? Which would have to mean that whoever killed Makuro... <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know. But okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's the hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants. All of them high school students. And the only people that take a single step in Hope's Peak since the killing game began are those 16 students. What? Listen. Are you telling the truth? Why do you go quiet all of a sudden? <laughs> okay. Now I'm really angry! I'm not talking. I've got nothing left to say to you. So get lost, would you? Why so mad? <sighs> he seems emotionally unstable. Hey! Leave me alone. Get out of here. Okay, I'm going. I just... You're really going to let me go? Huh, I don't even care anymore. You're all going to get your punishment later anyway. I need to start getting it ready. A super duper ultra special pun... Super duper extra special punishment. Overflowing with despair. <laughs> hey. Come on, Makoto, let's go. Okay. <laughs> huh? Alright. Monokuma's unstable laughter seemed to cling to us as we walked away. And just like that, we were out of the gym. I could hardly believe it, but... Somehow I ended up not getting executed. I still had my life and we still had a chance. Overall, things turned out way better than expected. Once again, I was in Kyoko's debt. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this episode here. Oh my goodness, it's getting exciting. And 
it looks like we're getting towards the end. So that's going to be all for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please stay safe, stay happy, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!